ground rules. Um, so mute yourself when you have background noise, unmute yourself to ask or answer any question. So first, I'll start with introducing PCDC, the Philadelphia Chinatown Development Corporation. Um, this is a nonprofit community-based organization that preserves, protects, and promotes Chinatown. We have several programs, including housing counseling and family services, the youth program, commercial corridor, um, neighborhood planning and advocacy, and civic engagement. Um, one of our, I would say, the most popular um, program is the Teen Club. It is an out-of-school time program that aims to help those students who came from low-income families, low-income minority families, or just youth that needs help with homework or just want an environment to make friends and have fun, especially during COVID. Um, but yeah, and we provide free SAT prep, college trips, leadership events, an internship for students from age, from grades seven to 12. So here's our teen club schedule for the virtual activities. We have homework help, um, the SAT reading, writing and math tutoring and college career prep workshops like the one we have right now. And then here's our um, schedule for the in-person sports activities. We have volleyball, ping pong, basketball, and badminton. All classes, materials, and activities are free of charge. You just gotta fill out the paperwork and it only takes like a couple of minutes. Let's let them in. Oh, it's not. Okay, there you go. Um, so our team club offers um, 590. regular participant while having all the educational resources available for them. And again, just got to fill out the form. Okay, so on April 10th, we have our annual spring cleanup. It's a quick four hours service where you team up with like a small group of people and just help make Chinatown clean. And I promise I've done it before as well. Um, it's like a quick workout and you get to meet new people also getting your hours in, so why not? And next we have our um, daily lift zone where you can get access to free Wi-Fi to do homework or just to attend your class. And you can study with friends as well. Also, you can get a rewards for attending, I think like twice or just twice per week. So please come and enjoy the free Wi-Fi. Um. Next is this, um, okay. okay, so, um, please have, please mute yourself. Okay, anyways, so, um, next we have this upcoming Tuesday, um, March 30th, we have our vaccination from 11 um, a.m. to 4 p.m. Just make sure you're qualified and pre-registered through our QR code and PCDC will give you a phone call for like a specific time. So yeah, um, oh yeah, also don't just show up because, don't just show up before like you are registered or before we give you guys a phone call because you know, COVID and everything's gotta be like organized and structured. Okay, and now, so we have our guest speaker, Carl Wong, with us here today. She's the director with, um, she's the director of the Chinatown Learning Center. And over time, she has served on many boards, including the ones I'm showing on the PowerPoint right now. And she mentors many children and young adults, helping them bridge and appreciate the best of both cultures and deals with social and and deals with social and emotional skills as well as like academics. For the past year, she has received many awards for her advocacy and community work. So let's give a warm welcome for our main guest today, Carl Wong. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Um, so Lena, were you going to um, ask the questions 
Um, or should I just like talk about the uh, outline that you sent me? Um, I think Sandra sent you the outline. I think you could just go over the okay. outline. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I'll go over briefly and then this way, because the main thing is that Um, you know, you want to know more about. Um, so um, again, I'm Carol Wong, the director of the Chinatown Learning Center. And uh, um, thank you so much for inviting me. The only sad thing about doing Zoom, I can't see any of you. And, and please, um, because I've had the school for almost 28, 29 years, some of you I might have even had as students. And I really love it when someone will come up to me and say, Miss Wong, I used to go to CLC or Miss Wong, I used to, you know, be in your class. So if you did, please let me know because I, I love to catch up with you and keep in touch with my students. I do keep in touch. I have to say of all, all the students I had in the 20, almost 29 years, I probably keep in touch with half of them which is a lot, <laughs> but I, I really enjoy it. Um, so I have had the school, like I said, 28 years, but I came into Chinatown in 1980 and I actually started the kindergarten class at the Chinese Christian Church and Center. So if any of your parents or relatives that went there, I probably had them the, uh, for three years um, and I stopped. I have two daughters, um, they're adults now. Actually, I'm, I have one granddaughter that's three and I have a grandson that that will turn one in July. So I'm very excited about that. Um, hi, Jordan. I had Jordan. <laughs> um, so uh, I want to uh, just give you a little bit of background. The re a lot of people say, well, what, you know, why did you open a school in Chinatown? Well, first of all, I want to give you a little bit of background um, to bring you up to date. So you think I just, I didn't just plop into Philadelphia and open a school. So I was born in a very small town called Williamsport in Pennsylvania. And it's a very small town. Well, it's not that small, but it's smaller than Philadelphia. And it's very close to uh, Penn State University, State College. But when I was born and raised there, um, there were only two other Asian families in the entire town. <laughs> but my dad, So imagine the entire county. So we grew up, um, you know, uh, very, you know, minority, but very like it wasn't diversified at all. And um, Chinatown was my house. <laughs> so needless to say, when I was very, I was very excited when I moved to Philadelphia because I'm like, oh, there's there's a Chinatown, you know. So that's that's how I ended up in Philadelphia. But growing up, I was very fortunate. Both my parents are Chinese. But my dad was born, like I said, in, in Williamsport, but my mom was born in China. And when they met and got married, they settled in Williamsport because people would always say, how did you end up in Williamsport? Well, my grandfather, someone sponsored him and he came over age 14 and he learned how to do the laundry business. So we ran the laundry. So that, but it was um, interesting growing up because a lot of people didn't ever see an Asian person. And, um, Unfortunately, my dad and his, he's the oldest of six. He's the one that um, endured a lot of the racism and, and the bullying and stuff like that. But luckily my dad was like a big guy. He was a football player, which is very unusual for an Asian to be that tall and that big, but that, that really helped. So I was really lucky. I had my mom who, who uh, raised us with a, a very Asian culture. We, were, we spoke Cantonese, but not even the formal dialect. I spoke Toy Sanwa, so I don't know if any of you I had I always felt that I was so lucky that I had the best of both worlds. I was able to appreciate my culture and then understand some of the American culture, so to speak. Even though I was American, I felt more Chinese because my mom was always the one that, that was with us. And I think sometimes my background will resonate with a lot of people because they'll come up to me afterwards. Usually when I do this in person, they'll come up and say, oh my gosh, I was the only Asian in my class too, or there was no, no one else that looked like me where I grew up and this and that. So I hear a lot of that. So I think it's really important that you know what, where I'm coming from. But again, um, because I felt I had the best of both worlds, I was able to embrace it, appreciate it, and educate people. Um, I have to tell you, uh, I knew I wanted to be a teacher ever since I was six years old. 
I was one of the lucky ones. A lot of times people grow up, they change majors or they change, oh, I think I want to do this or I change my mind. And that's okay because, you know, it's not always a straight path, but mine happened to be, and it doesn't have to be that way for everybody. So the reason why I decided I wanted to be a teacher is because when I went to school, I couldn't speak English. And I don't know if a lot of you encountered the same, um, you know, barrier. So I couldn't speak English. I went to kindergarten, not knowing what to expect, who was going to be there. Well, obviously I was the only Asian. So I went and back then kindergarten was nap, play and snack time, but you still had to communicate. So I went to school saying, hello, please, goodbye. And thank you. Those were my words because at home we always spoke Chinese with my mom. And then my dad spoke a little bit of Chinese, but it was mainly with my mom and my grand, my grandparents lived with us. So, um, and probably, A wonderful kindergarten teacher so wonderful because she loved what she did and she, she cared so much about all of us and it didn't matter to her that I looked different that I couldn't speak English and th that I was like so new just not just to school but the whole culture um, so she took me and all the kids in the classroom under her wing and I survived kindergarten <laughs> and I went to first grade and I had another amazing teacher who just loved what she did, and I was hooked. By first grade, I said, this is what I want to do. So I, um, I can tell you the name of every teacher I had. That's how much I love school. <laughs> and I used to make my, I have a younger sister and two brothers. I used to make them play school so I could practice. So I, I love the fact that I learned so much in so little time and not knowing English. And because these teachers cared, they, they didn't care reading was really important to me because I was kind of sheltered it opened my um, my world up I would go to the library as often as I could the most books you could take out was six so every time I would go take six books out as soon as I was done I go back to the library and you know so reading was like a, a wonderful outlet so that's why I chose um, reading specialist but my first degree was elementary education degree because at the time believe it or not I thought okay I don't want to change diapers um, so I think I'm gonna start with kindergarten so my first degree was kindergarten to eighth grade elementary education my second degree was reading specialist so I could teach any grade in any age and then believe it or not 30 years later not that long ago um, I went back and got another master's at West Westchester University. And this one was an early childhood education because things had changed so much um, that I really wanted to be on top of what was going on. I really, at, back in the day, I wanted to get my degree in English as a second language or, you know, to teach English language learners because I just felt it was so important. Um, I, like I said, I started the kindergarten class at Chinese, Chinese Christian Church Center. And they were the little ones, the preschoolers. And I thought, okay, because um, Mitzi McKenzie, you know the playground, Mitzi McKenzie playground? Okay, she was one of my mentors and one of my closest um, friends. She was like family to me. So I saw how much she and the organization help people. And so I did the kindergarten and preschool for three years, but I, my kids were so bright, but I knew they were not going to do well in kindergarten because they just, didn't know the language. They didn't understand the customs. They didn't know the culture. And a lot of them I got when they just came right over from China. And I thought, oh my goodness. So I did everything I could to help them as much as I could when I had them to prepare them for kindergarten. And I was really lucky. Once I opened my school, um, I got them all back in the after school program. So it was like a little family. So I did that for three years, stayed home for nine years to raise my two daughters, but I still kept in touch. I, I did tutoring and I taught classes at Bucks County Community College. But then the opportunity came for me to open up my own school in, in uh, 1993. So that's how Chinatown Learning Center was born. 
So that's that's a little bit of my background. Um, so before I keep talking, is there any are there any questions from that perspective, like my background or anything like that? No questions. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I explained to you why I chose my career. And I explained to you why I'm teaching when I'm teaching, because a lot of people said, well, why not? Because I used to live in Bucks. And, um, you know, because they needed it the most. Um, so I think the one question was, oh, did I ever regret? No. I, I love what I do every day because you never get bored. Kids are the most wonderful, creative, fun, funny uh, kids that you ever want. And I used to tell people, you know, where am I going to get such a cool job where I get free hugs? You know, they hug me by the knee because they're so tiny, but you know, they're, they're so cute. And um, I love it that I have a chance to guide them growing up. Um, you know, a long time ago, uh, before one parent would at least be home, you know, usually it was the mom, but not always. And now a lot of times both parents have to work. And it's just really hard for some parents to spend time with their kids, whether to read to them or take them out to, to do something, you know, so I, I feel in my program that I provide that so that the kids um, are exposed to things that they will have to know what they are because you know it's not the parents fault everyone does the best they can but I, I feel in our school that we explain to them show them and act have activities to give them opportunities to know what different holidays are what are some of the customs are um, you know what are uh, some of the mannerisms or um, you know when you grow up and get your job you'll have to know what a work culture is, like where you work. So now, and then I get my kids ready to know what a school culture is, you know. Um, we really work a lot with the families, especially the parents, because they don't know. It's like, we'll explain to them why it's important to go to parent meetings, why it's important to, you know, check on the report card or to check to see what the kids are doing, you know. And, and a lot of times, like Lena said, I do mentor a lot of kids and how I do that is I don't take sides I, I, I'm a good listener trust me I'm a very good listener I always want to hear both sides of the story I can't tell you how many times I have I called parents to explain to them different things whether it's a club an event or anything to convince them to let their children go because all Asian parents a lot not all but most will expect the the kids not do any extracurricular activities, not to be joining any club or doing this or doing that because they want them to stay home and study because they need to get straight A's. And that's not the healthiest thing, but because maybe that's the way the parents were raised or what they were taught, they only do that because they love and care about you so much. But I also on my end explain to them how important it is for kids to be involved, to have leadership skills, to volunteer and to be engaged skills. And if you're not quite sure what that means, social skills are like to, to how to be how to be with friends, how to make friends, how to keep friends, how to be a good friend. You know, different, you don't know, you think, oh, that's that's silly. Well, you know, there are some people that are extremely shy or they're introverted or they never had a chance to go out and be with friends. So it's a really important thing. We stress that in our program. And the emotional skills are the ones that thinking, talking, and expressing your feelings. That is so important. And I'll tell you why. It's extra important because being Asian, I can say this, we don't talk about stuff like that. You know, at least my parents didn't. I mean, she didn't even tell me if somebody passed away or somebody was sick because she thought it would curse our family, you know, or, you know, oh, we, you know, or it would bring bad luck or something. And you never dared like talk about like if you were afraid of something or somebody was bullying you or, you know, um, you're think you like this boy or like this girl or I want to go to this dance, but I, I don't know how I should dress, you know, all those things 
are important because you're living it now. Um, you know, so we do a lot of that in our preschool and you're like, oh, how do you do that when the kids are so young? Well, I'll give you a couple examples. We give a lot of opportunities for the kids to speak in front of others. We do show and tell, we do story out louds, and then they would let them talk about it, or we give them a puppet or a stuffed animal, and then they have to redo the story. But think about it. How, you know, you guys are all either in high school or college. You had to get in front of a class at one time or another to do a report, right? So we start them young, so they're not afraid to do that. In fact, every year we take the kids over to Onlook House and they sing for the seniors and they love it. Or at the end of this year, we have the moving up day and they sing for all the times all of you had to do a group project you know did, were you the one left doing it because nobody else cared or did you not do anything because you didn't understand what was going on you know so those are the things that I like to mentor um, people on to like you know well how, sh how should I say that or what should I do or they'll come to me and say Miss Wong this is what's going on at work or you know my school da 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 and like I said, I'm a good listener. Um, I don't have the answer to everything or the answer for everyone. But sometimes, honestly, when you hear yourself talk to somebody else, you figure out the answer on your own. I can guide you. I can give you resources. And I can maybe question like, oh, so why did that make you feel bad? Or why do you feel like you have to say yes to everybody when you really want to say no? Like, those are the things that I mentor kids on, not just school stuff, but it's all that social emotional stuff that that helps you become the adult that you want to be and that you can be. I, I find that a lot of um, not just uh, kids, but adults um, don't realize their potential. And I feel like as a teacher, it's my job and I want to to help people realize the, the good qualities, characteristics and the traits that they have that they never even thought about. You know, and then the ones that you want to work on, okay, I'll say, okay, well, let's, let's do a scenario. Um, if this happens again, you know, what would you say or do? You know, how many times did something happen and you're like, oh, I wish I would have said something or you saw a friend get picked on, you didn't know what to do. Like, those are real issues, and especially now. I don't have to tell you, look at all this anti-Asian hate crime going on. You know, not that I want anyone to get hurt or get bullied themselves, but there are different ways you can help, you know, your friends, your family, and your community. So, you know, this is why it's really important for everyone to work and band together so that we can find a peaceful and appropriate way to deal with a lot of the issues that we're all dealing with now. Um, you can give me a sign when to like stop. I don't know. <laughs> I'm losing track of time. I don't know. Yeah, but one of, like I said, the most satisfying thing about my job is helping people. And like I said, it's not just the students that I've had or had. And like I said, I'm really lucky because I get a lot of them back in the after school program. So I get to see them grow up. And so many of them have invited me to their high school and college graduations. And I go to all of them. And some of them even invited me to their weddings. And because, you know, like I said, I've been teaching a long time. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so those are some of the things that, I'm, you know, I really love it when parents come back to me and say i'm so glad i listened to you and the teachers my son my daughter is doing so well in school and i'm so proud of them and you know not that they were on the wrong track they just didn't know the other opportunities or tracks that they could try because they just knew one thing and you know think about it if i took you and dropped you in france or in spain you know, it'd be like, okay, now what? What do we do? And, and, and then you're raising a family, you know? So that's what your parents are going through. Because sometimes I have kids who say, oh, my parents are so strict and this and that. But, you know, after I talk to them and they tell me, and it's like, oh, wow, they are, they are, you know, working so hard so I can have a better life than they did. And, you know, as kids, sometimes we don't 
think about that. You think, oh, they won't let me go to this. You know, you know, I, like I called so many parents explaining what a prom was or a school trip and this and that. I told them the advantages and I told them when you go to college, they're not going to just look at your grades. They don't care. When you get a job, they're not going to say, let me see your report card. I'm not saying grades aren't important. My, what I'm encouraging you to do is you try your best at whatever you do. But the thing is, they want to see that you can work with people and that you have leadership skills. Because that's why I think it's really yep. important you do your best, you know, whether you're volunteering or, or whatever, because something from that act or that action, it will help you in the future, I promise you. You know, you think, oh, I'm just volunteering, I'm not going to show up. Well, you know what, are you going to do that at work? I don't think so. You know, they, they want people that are responsible, reliable, and you know what, they are, um, they have um, social intelligence too. You know, and it's not just about the A's and B's, you know, again, those are important, but you know, it's not the end of the world if you didn't get all A's and it's not the end of the world if you didn't go to an Ivy League school. And I tell people college isn't for everyone, but what I suggest is maybe take a couple courses at like CCP. We're so lucky. We have a lot of good community colleges in our area. Um, so if anyone has um, questions about colleges, I'll be happy to help you because I also, um, they, I think they gave you my correct email address in the chat. So you can copy it down and um, you can email me say, oh, um, Miss Wong, I listened to you, you were a guest speaker at the PCDC Career Shop and then introduce yourself and I'll be happy, more than happy to talk to you via email if you're shy or meet up with you socially distanced at PCDC, whatever. But I also have a lot of resources because I do get involved with a lot of boards. A lot of the boards that I'm on help youth, they help with career, and they help women and children. So I have a lot of resources that will tell you a lot of scholarships that are going on. And I encourage you to apply for as many as you can. And even if you don't get it, it's okay because it gave you practice to sign up for, for them. Um, so that's, that's really important. Um, so let me see, my current role, I'm a director. I mean, I used to be in the classroom, but it, it got to be too much because we have so many kids. So um, right now I'm just like running the school. I, I um, manage the teachers with the kids and, and whatnot. So I would say if you want to go into this field, um, I would say you have to be patient, flexible, creative. You know, those things are really important. Okay, I think I see a question. Kevin. Oh, my college experience? Okay. hundred people that's all the Asians there were that's it so um, when I went to college it was real, I was really excited because I made my first couple Asian friends <laughs> and, and some of you where you go to um, high school and, and college around here just, you know a lot of Asians but it was good it was hard but it, it you know it taught me a lot I mean when you go to college you have to be very disciplined when you're looking at your schedule you might have a big gap and you might say oh I don't have to study. I have this big gap. I can do it. Make yourself a schedule, stick to it. And then what happens is you develop really good habits that later you will take with you on your job. So um, just like how you do it now, because I'm sure all of you are good students, you know, you don't wait till the last minute to study. And then, you know, um, you know, do study groups, I mean, which probably some of you do already. And the main thing for everything, whether it's in school or your job or never be afraid to ask for help, never. Because that's one thing that I was a little bit shy about, never. Because you know what, first of all, no one has all the answers and a lot of people wanna help you, but they can't read your mind. 
you know, so you might, if you need help with something, if I can't help you, I'll send you to somebody that might have those resources. It's like, oh, we don't have a scholarship in this thing, but my other group has a scholarship. Please apply for it. Or if you need help filling it out or you don't understand what to write or how to do it. And then um, I went on a lot of college visits too, because my, my older daughter, we visited 12 colleges, 12. So she ended up at Cornell, uh, which she loved, and then she got her master's at NYU. And then my other daughter applied to two colleges because she knew she wanted to go to Philadelphia University. That's the one she really wanted to go. Now it's called Jefferson University. And now she's got a fantastic job at Comcast. So it just doesn't, doesn't matter where you go. You go to a community college, it's okay because you can always transfer because it's where you get your degree. And you know what, like I said, you know, when you get your degree, it doesn't have to be Ivy League. We have so many great colleges around here. And then, you know, um, don't limit yourself. I had a lot of uh, students that I was mentoring. They got um, either scholarships or they got accepted to a college. And I knew their parents could afford it, but some, they couldn't. And I said, just apply anyways. We'll figure it out. You're, hopefully, you make really good friends with your guidance counselor because they will be the one to also help you. But if you don't feel they're helping enough, you know, we can, you can find, talk to a teacher or find somebody else that will help you. You know, we all want you to do well. It's just, you know, sometimes, you know, it's not a good match. So, you know, tr um, apply for all the scholarships, find out what's out there. You can always Google it and get this. If you Google it, there's like this list. I can't remember the name of it. There's this list that has all these, I think 50 or 100, very unique qualification and requirements. And it's not all about the grades. It just really isn't. Um, there, I think there's one that's like, oh, if your name is this, you can apply for it. That's it. So really it's like talking about, um, talking about what you think you're good at or what you could bring to the table. And that's everywhere, you know, whether it's uh, filling out the college application, like why would this university want you there? And then when you go for your job, well, why would this company wanna hire you? What can you bring to the table? And this is where all those leadership skills and all those things that you do that you think are mindless, like no, put your heart and soul into it and do your best. And then what I tell people when I'm mentoring, write down or put in your computer all the things that you've done. Like for example, if you are involved in the community, put it down, community service, and then list the things that you were involved with. Because they might say, well, what, what have you done in your community? I mean, if you have nothing there, they're going to say, well, you're not going to do anything for our company either. So that's why that's important. Okay, I see another question. Somebody asked me what a regular day my job is. Okay. Um, so a regular day is we greet the, the parents. And it, of course, it's different now because of COVID. The parents don't even come in. Uh, they drop them off. Everybody gets their temperature check. They sanitize their hands. As soon as they go upstairs, they wash their hands. And then they go into their classroom. So I have preschool, like I said, and I also have after school. The after school program, the kids are all doing their virtual classes at, at CLC. So it, the, the day is never boring. It's always different. And there's always something going on. But the kids are wonderful and I love seeing them grow and progress. Um, and they're so funny sometimes. They're so funny and they don't even know how funny and cute they are. <laughs> okay, so is there anything you can do now? This is another question from Jin Hao. Okay, is there anything you can do now that can increase your chances of employment later on such as? Yes, uh -huh. all those things all those extracurricular activities. And it's not just joining to say, oh, I, I belong to 10 clubs. Like, well, what did you do at those 10 clubs? You know, pick a few that you know you're gonna be involved and really like contribute. And then maybe be an officer. They like to see that, you know, and you don't always have to be an officer, but you know, if you are qualified and you get nominated, go for it. Don't say, oh, I don't think I can do that. You can always find an excuse not to do something. You know, but if you really want to do something, you'll be creative and figure out a way to do it. You know, so like I said, start that list now because just, I know probably a lot of you have already done a lot of cool things and a lot of helpful things. Because then this way, when it comes time to write your college essay or your job essay, you can use some of that. Yeah, and of course, um, another language is good. Don't don't be embarrassed or shy about putting like fluent in Spanish, Chinese, you know, but, you know, a lot of people are diversifying their workforce. So they, they, you know, they want people that can maybe translate in this department or, or whatever. Um, 
Are there any other questions? I think that's the last one I saw in the chat. You may not be interested to touch it. Yeah. So, okay, this question is a good question. What do you recommend to young Asian Americans who may or may not be interested attached to their immigrant Asian background? Okay, again, it's really important. Take the time to think about your childhood. Because you know what, all this stuff that happened in your childhood and where your parents are really helps mold and influence how you're thinking now. And you know, honestly, I have to tell you, no, first of all, no family is perfect. Every family has issues or concerns and some worse than others. My parents were really uh, wise. My dad would always say to me, never feel sorry for anyone because there's always someone worse off. My mom's motto was you treat everyone the way you want to be treated. So that's, those were my things that I grew up with. And this is what I instilled in my children, um, my two daughters, and then in my future grandchildren. But the, the kids that I have, sometimes um, kids or people, not just kids, are so self-centered, they only think about themselves. They don't think about the consequences or how it will affect everybody else. Now, again, you have to set boundaries for yourself. You can't do everything that everybody else wants you to do because you don't want to be a rug. You don't want everyone to walk all over you, okay? You just don't. So you need to like think about where your boundaries are, what your values are. If family's important, okay, then that needs to be at the top of your list. I'm not saying if family's not important, but open communication will solve a lot of things because I think a lot of kids, when I talk to them, oh, my parents wouldn't understand. And I'll say, well, did you try to talk to them? Well, no, not really. They're really busy. Well, think about it. If you really want to talk to your best friend, you're going to find a way to talk to them, even if they're working and going to school. So like I said, if there's a will, there's a way. So if you need like some strategies to open that door to conversation, and I'm not saying you're going to sit down and have like a, a marathon conversation when you do this. It's going to take time. And like I said, Anything and everything you do, not just with this job, you have to be very patient. Things are not going to change or happen overnight. Um, it's just really important to embrace your, your background. And I know for some people that's hard because, and this is in all ethnic groups, because I have some friends like that. They just disown their ethnic group. They've done everything the total opposite. Or they were so sheltered and, and they felt like everything was shoved down their throat that they just totally rebelled. And then unfortunately for some of them later, it was a huge regret because their children didn't know about their Asian history because the parents dismissed it. So you have to kind of sort out what your values are and what's very important to you. And you know what, there is a way to combine all of them and you don't have to be like the best in everything, just like in school, you, can, you don't, I mean, yeah, it's good if you have that goal, but it's not the end of the world if you're not the best. And you know what, if, even if you were the best, when you go to college, you're not gonna be the best. There's gonna be a lot of other bests, you know? And I don't want you to be like, oh my gosh, I feel so stupid because I'm not the best. No, 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 no. You pat yourself in the back and say, hey, I'm so lucky I'm in college. I'm so lucky my parents were able to send me. You know, you gotta appreciate and show gratitude, you know, for everything that you, that you have, I mean, because I mean, I don't have to tell you, look at all, if you watch TV, look at all these kids that cross the border on their own. They're nine years old, younger, that they came, walked for months and months and came with like nothing. And later, some of those will be very successful because they want to be and they found a way to do it. So, you know, don't, don't ever think, oh, I'm, my parents are so mean, I don't get to do anything. Like, well, you know what, take the time to explain to them what, what it is why it's important to you and then you can can you know maybe reach you know compromise compromise is like a word sometimes people forget you might not always get your own way and sometimes parents might not get their own way and they're always going to treat you like you're a little kid doesn't matter how old you are i'm telling you this is an asian mom talking <laughs> so um you know take the time just to say oh this club that I um, belong to, this is what we did. And I really learned a lot because, you know, or, oh, we're doing this because we want to keep, like if you're volunteering for the cleanup, you might say, oh, we really think it's important to keep our community clean, you know, because not everybody's respectful 
of, you know, of the environment or of their families or of their friends. Okay, I'm looking, uh, okay. Okay, I'm looking at this next question. Some students believe that majoring in STEM in higher education is the path to economic success. Whether that influence, you know, since you focus on, so what is your take on the popular belief in the top? Okay, like I think I said earlier, and I don't know if all of you heard, college might not be for everyone. And it's not the end of the world. Think about it. What if we did not have people that picked up our garbage? What if we did not have people that fixed our cars? What if we did not have people to service all the appliances in your house? I mean, if so, I could go on and on, but you get my message. And it doesn't hurt to, you can try college and if it's not for you, I mean, really try, not just say, oh, I went one semester and I didn't like, don't quit because you didn't like the teacher or was the wrong kind of class, you know, really give it your all. And then if you decide, because I mentor a couple people where they went into car mechanic and they're doing great. You know, um, and I have to tell you, money is not everything, although a lot of times it's jammed down our throat. That's just, I mean, unfortunately, and I can say this because I'm Chinese, they, you know, that's like the culture. Um, I used to have parents say to me, oh, you must be making a lot of money. Look at all these kids. First of all, they wouldn't last a day in a classroom. And second of all, if they knew all the bills that we pay, and I really take good care of my teachers, I pay for their health insurance, I pay for their salary. I mean, there's like so much other, it's not always about the money. Honestly, if you love what you're doing or your work and you're passionate about it, it, it will work out and you'll find ways. I have to tell you this one story. I have this really good friend. He had a wonderful college degree. He had a high paying job in a corporation and he got burned out. He just didn't like it. He didn't like the corporate culture. He just didn't like it. So he went down to Texas and opened up an, um, like a Regis Ice business. He did carts at all the college campuses for water ice. He is one of the most successful people that I know, but he is also one of the happiest people I know. So it's not just all about the money. And I'm not saying quit because of the pressure. I mean, you know, you're going to be pressured a little bit here and there. Um, money, yeah, it's important. You know, we need to eat. We need to maybe have a car. So, I mean, I'm not saying go in the desert somewhere and study cactus. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying really think about what you want to do and whatever it is you want to do. You, there's always classes and courses to take. You know, maybe take a course first to see, okay, this is how it is. Okay, I think I can take another course. And then, you know, if you even just go like take an associate degree course, uh, uh, major, you take like two or three courses and then later you can add more or sit in and audit a class. When you audit a class, that means you go to a class, but you don't get credit for it. But at least you can kind of see, because I know it's really scary for high school kids. Like, oh my gosh, what's college? What's college? You know, and, and, and because parents want their kids to stay home and work in the family business, oh, I need her to help me in the restaurant. I said, no. So I had to call this one mom and said, your daughter is one of the smartest people I know. Please let her go. And I talked to her and her parents and they let her go. She is happy as a clam. And it doesn't mean later that she's gonna come home and take care of the business. But even if she doesn't, she has the know-how to help them run the business. But at least, and then she'll be happy in doing what her major was. I have, I'll never forget this one conversation I had. I sat next to a dentist one time and he was bragging about how his daughter um, was a dentist. And then he went on to tell me, and I was like, oh, that's great. You must be so proud of her. She can, you know, share the, the practice with you. And it's like, he told me she really wanted to do something else. And I forget what the major was. I mean, it wasn't like, I don't know. It just wasn't a bad major. I don't know what he was talking about. And he said, you can only do that if you get your dental degree. <laughs> so she got her dental degree, and then she switched to do what she wanted to do. But she fulfilled her family. But look at those years that she lost. You know, so sometimes parents think they're doing the right thing because they don't know any better or it's drilled in their head because that's how they were brought up. But I'm telling you, you know, please be open to having conversation with your parents. And if that doesn't work, you might have like a family relative or a family friend who could also talk to them. I'm not saying take your side or take their side, but it's like maybe 
open it up a little bit more so they understand, oh, if she does this, it'll help her maybe get into college. Oh, okay. Okay, you, you can sign up for a yearbook or, yeah, you can do this. You know, they, they just don't understand. So that's why. So, and then they don't understand you because you never took the time to explain to them why what you were doing is important. You know, and two, as you get older and later, if some of you get married and then later, if some of you have children, You'll, you'll see how much your parents loved and cared about you and worked so hard to give you a better life. And you're going to do the same thing. But what I have to deal with now with parents is I have to tell them not to give them everything and not to do everything for them. Because you know why? They're taking away the opportunity for them to learn. Um, and you really have to learn from your mistakes. You know, you really, you know, we all make mistakes. You know, some of them are big, some of them are little, but number one, do not beat yourself up. You know, as long as you learn from it, okay. You know, it's not the end of the world. And then two, a lot of times I'll tell my men, my mentees, I'll say, you know, if you make a mistake, you know, we all do that. We think, oh my gosh, why did I do that? Or how did I forget? Or the, okay. Like, listen, one example, oh, I forgot about that meeting it was so important. Now I'm not going to, you know, now I'm not going to be able to apply for this and that. It's like, okay, so you write down, okay, I forgot. Why did I forget? I forgot to put it in my phone. I forgot to remind myself. So what you do next time, if something's important, you set up a couple things to remind you. Have your best friend. Hey, don't forget, you got to go to this interview. Get ready. You know, it's in an hour. There's nothing wrong with that. So if you learn from your mistakes, it's really helpful. And then, um, well, like I said, if you learn from your mistakes, that's helpful in anything you do, whether it's school or work or even later when you become a parent, I used to tease my older daughter because it was my, you know, I was a first time mom. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm trying everything out on her. <laughs> I used to uh, tease her that she was my experimental child, <laughs> you know, because then I learned, oh, okay, I'm not going to do that. So when my second daughter came, I knew, I knew how to do some things better. But another thing, do not ever compare yourself to anybody. And I tell my parents that all the time. And it's really hard sometimes for them to do that. They say, oh, my first kid was so good. I don't know what's wrong with this one. And I tell them, calm down. There's nothing wrong with any of them. They are two different people. Just because you had them both and they have the same parents and you brought them up the same way. My two daughters could not be any different, not be any different. And that's okay because I don't think you would want to clone you know, even twins, you know, even though they're alike and they do things, you know, there, you know, there's some differences. So don't compare yourself because that's a hard thing not to do because especially of social media and all that stuff that's out there, you know, don't, don't compare yourself. You just do your best and you do what you know you're good at, you know, and then, like I said, it's really important to know what your values are because you know what, your values might not be the same as your best friend, but I bet you, you have both have the same, almost the same values or she wouldn't be, or he wouldn't be your best friend, you know? So, and then two, give everyone a chance. Give everyone a chance to say, oh, she looks really snobby or, oh, he's really, you know, a show off and that, you know, you don't know everybody's story. You really don't know everybody's story. You know, if you give somebody a chance to tell their story, and then you can tell your story like, wow, we have more in common than I thought. He's really a cool guy or, gee, I didn't think like later, I didn't think we'd ever be hanging out, you know, things like that. And that's what people, and, and again, uh, another thing that I brought my uh, kids up, and I do this with my staff, not everyone's going to be peachy, keeny, nice and kind and, you know, that. Okay, you have to tell yourself that's their problem. Don't ever let somebody make you do something that's not you. Like if somebody's nasty, rude, or horrible, don't, don't have them instigate you to spiel it back to them. And I'm not saying like walk away, but there are certain times where you need to walk away because you don't know if the other person, you know, could hurt you. I mean, I don't have to tell you, you watch the news, but there are times where you can uh, speak up, but, you know, you just... You just say to yourself, no, you know, I'm not, I'm not going there. Don't, you know, and I, my, my thing, you kill people with kindness. You get a lot more done. You get a lot more um, things that go your way when you're, you have good manners, you know, being polite, you know, anytime someone does something for you, there's nothing wrong with saying thank you. 
I think that's a forgotten word. Where if you need something, oh, please, do you mind if I borrow this book? Or, oh, thanks so much. I really appreciate, you know, whatever. To your family and your friends and in the public, people remember that, you know, that it's kind of like lost the, um, you know, the manners. But, you know, killing people with kindness doesn't hurt anyone. Again, some people aren't going to be receptive to that, but most people will. You know how many times where I had to call for some parents because they made, somebody made a mistake on their bill? Well, if I got on the phone and said, hey, you guys made a mistake on this bill, and I start, like, yelling, screaming at them and, you know, whatever, no, no one's going to want to help. And I'll say, oh, you know, I'm just calling for so-and-so. And, -so. and um, I think there might be um, a misunderstanding. There seems to be a mistake on their on their invoice. Um, can you um, check your account just to kind of look into it? And the whole time they're doing this, I'm saying, thank you so much for your help. I really appreciate your time. And then when you're done with anything and everything, always write down the time you called, get the name, and put the date. Because this way, if you ever have to go back, you have, like if somebody else called and say, oh, I heard you were complaining. It's like, yes, but I called five times on these five dates and this is what they told me. And they say, oh, okay, well, we'll follow up. But, you know, anytime you're done with a conversation, you always say, thanks so much for your help. I really appreciate it. Like today, I had to do that twice because people sent stuff to the wrong address. And I don't know how many times we had to tell them. So I finally got someone at the top of the chain in the executive um, office and they, they apologize. And I said, no, 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 you, you helped me and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much and have a nice day or have a nice weekend. It doesn't ever hurt to say that. And you know what? You never know if somebody's having a bad day because what happens if 10 people before you called and all they did was yell at this person? You know, everybody's doing something and it's their job. You know, if you get a nasty, mean, rude person on the phone, which we all have, you know, my, my goal is always to kill them with kindness on the phone too. I was like, oh, you know, I, you know, thank you so much for taking my call. I was wondering if you could help me with something. You know, I really appreciate it. And then when they're done, the whole tone of voice changes. Oh, yes, no problem. You know, call us again anytime you, you have an issue. Oh, sure, thank you. I mean, their tone totally changes. And this is just on the phone. So can you imagine if you were like in a store or you were somewhere, you never treat anyone the way you don't want to be treated. You know, if somebody's a little slow, okay, well, maybe they just are very tired. Maybe this is their second job. Or if somebody's in front of you, don't be impatient. Say, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get out of this store. And that. You don't know. That could be somebody, that could be your grandmother at another store. I mean, so just really be aware of your actions and your words because they really do impact everyone and anyone. Even though you don't think it's a big deal, it is a big deal to some people. It really is. Um, an act of kindness a word of kindness goes a very long way. Yeah, is there, I don't think there's any more questions, right? I think I went over my time. <laughs> oh, wait, I see something. In terms of mental illness, uh, wait. Oh, okay, this is a good one. How do we, uh, how should students go about dealing with issues of lack of motivation and burnout from staring at a screen all day? And um, some, is this something students should be monitoring themselves? Yes, 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 yes. I've called many parents to tell them, talk to them, not tell them. Talk to them about their, their kids being on social media too long and on the wrong sites. First of all, um, these are younger kids I'm talking about. They don't understand how dangerous it is. I mean, first of all, it's not their fault that they're glued to their devices. You figure a whole year we've been like locked up in our houses and couldn't see our friends, couldn't be with other family members. It's hard. It was really hard. It was hard for everybody. And, you know, and this is where patience comes in. You just have to be patient. I mean, you need to make sure your parents or your elderly relatives are vaccinated and stuff. But even so, you go out, you could be a carrier, even if you don't get it. You might bounce back right away but they might not. And you never want to live with that feeling, that guilt that you brought the virus in. So anyways, well, back to, sorry, back to the burnout. So it's okay to have like Zoom calls with friends and stuff like that. In fact, you know what, schedule it. Like that group that you hung out with, you know, schedule it. That's what I, that's what I did with my friends. Every Friday night, we, we just do a Zoom just to catch up. Like, oh, would you do that? You know what, even if it's the same thing, at least you're talking to somebody and not looking at a screen. 
So you can schedule Zoom calls with, with your friends. And then now, because the weather's getting nice, you can do um, social distance activities at Franklin Square Park or, you know, if PCDC has something or, you know, somewhere that's safe and, you know, double mask and just, you know, go get takeout, support the local businesses in Chinatown and just, you know, have a picnic, have a picnic, you know, or, you know, I don't know, I think you can play games like, you know, fun games, not the, the, I think they play Roblox or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. I mean, I see the kids playing with it, but, um, you know, there's some things you can do as a, as a group. I think I saw some people doing like Pictionary in a group. I mean, you know, like some of the stuff's like, oh, I don't know what that is, but you know, you can find some fun games to do together, but, and the, you know what, there's nothing wrong with calling somebody and talking on the phone. And I know, if you talk on the phone, you can do like video chats or group calls. I mean, I know it's not the same as being in person, but just be a little bit more patient. They're actually starting and testing the vaccines on children now. So, I mean, but if you're 18 and over, I think you can get the vaccine. Um, so, are there any other questions on the, the burnout um, with the screen? You know, just be patient. Just don't feel like, oh, I've been cooped up for a year and I'm just going to go out. I deserve it. You know what? All you have to do is look at all those crazy people that went down to Florida and they're on the beach. Well, guess what? When they all go home, all their families, well, somebody will get it and, some, and, mo and a lot of people will not survive. Um, you know, so just be mindful of not just your actions, but how your actions will influence or or be consequential to people around you. And I think this question is, should mental health be a topic of discussion? Yes, 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 um, definitely, yes. And I would be happy to do that if you, and, and well, you know, you have Esther, she's wonderful. You know, if you want like a panel of people, that's fine too, or even just do a informal group. Like I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a sociologist, but I work with enough kids that, you know, I can pick your brain or you can pick my brain and we can just have a very informal conversation. You know, I'm happy to do that. And I think somebody had put, oh, okay. What do I recommend for someone that doesn't know what career path they want to go down? Okay, so that's a good question too. And a lot of kids don't know what they want to do. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with not having an answer when someone goes, what are you going to major in? You don't know. I mean, you're, you're lucky you're going to college or you, you're like, oh, I'm so happy I even got in or oh, I'm, I'm, I'm scared. I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm not going to know anyone. I never want someone not to go because they don't know anyone or their friends are not going. Your friends are not going to graduate with you and go work with you and be in your family. You know, don't just don't be a follower. I mean, if you have your eye on a couple of colleges, talk to your guidance counselor. Um, and I don't know, are they doing, I don't know if they're doing virtual meetings, the guidance counselors. I imagine they are. I hope they are because, you know, some of you are seniors. You really need that guidance. Um, but um, so if you don't know what you want to do, think about the classes that you took in high school that you really liked. Um, like say like you're in science, like, oh, I don't know if I want to go into science, but if you explore that, there are like probably hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different ways you can relate science to something that you never thought of. Like my daughter at one time thought she wanted to go into forensic science, you know, but she ended up doing um, marketing. <laughs> but so there's, there's, uh, and then too, if you're interested in a certain occupation, you can ask um, people at PCDC that's in charge of the teen club or me, it's like, oh, I'm, I like accounting, but what's involved, you know, whatever, because you're not going to get to all the occupations that are out there. So I'll be more than happy to say, oh, well, you can talk to this person. This is what they do. And it's better to talk to someone that's doing it, you know, just like me. If somebody wants to be a teacher, great. I'll talk to you for like days and days because I love what I do. And we need more Asian teachers. Isn't it great when you go to school and you have someone that looks like you? You know, think of all these young kids that are coming up, you know, just they can relate. And now there's more actors and actresses. There's more TV shows. There's more movies. There's just more positive role models. And that's what we all need. So, and everybody wants to help so but you just have to speak up we can't read your mind um like i said we we have resources where we can guide you to someone that could help you in that area i know we covered a lot and like i said if you send me your email and introduce yourself you know like who you are 
where you go to school. And if you have a question, everything that I talk to you about is strictly confidential. I just want you to know that. Like I said, I'm not a psychologist and I'm not, you know, but I do love helping people. And I know, like I said, I know the best of both worlds, the Asian and the Caucasian culture, and also as a parent and also as a student. Um, you know, there's all, and always know there's always two sides to every story, always. Until you understand where that other person's coming from, you're like, oh, that's why my mom always said that. I mean, even now, my mom will tell me stories when she was growing up. And I'm like, oh, wow, you had to walk that far to school. Like school in most other countries, especially in Asia, it's a privilege. And it makes me really sad when I see how many people here do not appreciate the education system. Yeah, it's, you know, maybe in Philly, it's not the best, you know, as far as like the schools and this and that. It's not like maybe some of the outer counties and everything, but you were lucky, school's free and you can go, you know. Um, so just, you know, be mindful of that. Um, like I said, you know, you, you have my email address. Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay, so don't be afraid to shoot me an email. And if you have any suggestions or topics of things that you wanna hear more about, um, I'll be happy to talk to whoever's in charge and we can do that. It could be informal, could be like four people, could be a couple people, you know, because I know sometimes people are a little bit shy about talking about things and I'm more than happy to do one-on-one -on -one too. So, um, and sometimes, like I said, you just need someone to listen to and then you find out, it's like, oh, did I just say that? Oh, maybe I think I will do that. But don't be embarrassed to say, I don't have a major yet. You know, I just want to see what's out there. Because you know what? The first two years are just your requirement classes. Now, unless you know you're going to want to be a nurse or you want to go into accounting or something, but that's different. You know, you would be on that path because you're, you will all get an advisor in college. Make friends with that advisor because they, that person will help guide you through. Now, do not be afraid if you feel your advisor is not doing his or her job. You can always switch. And I know some people said, oh, I didn't like, she didn't help me at all. I'm like, well, you know, you probably could have switched and or connect with one of your professors that you really like and they can guide you. Like I said, people can't read your mind, reach out for help. And then, you know, later when you're maybe in your sophomore year, if you need to declare a major, okay, you can pick something general. And then as you get more into your core courses, you're like, wow, I really like this. And then you can always, in your uh, second or third semester of depending where you go in your junior year, and then in your senior year, you would do more of those courses that emphasize the field you might want to go to and you know what i'm not encouraging this but this does happen there are people that i used to that i know that okay i'll give you one example very successful teacher and one of you might have even had him i'm not even going to tell you his name or what school he's at a very prestigious uh school he got his law degree that's what his parents wanted him to do be a lawyer Got his law degree, and I don't have to tell you how long that took. So he practiced law, absolutely hated it. It just wasn't for him. He always wanted to be a teacher. So now he's a teacher, and he has his master's in teaching, and he just loves what he does, and everyone that's ever had him loves him and learns so much. So, you know, don't be afraid to speak up, because, you, you know, and if you're not sure, it's okay to go to a community college or just take a couple courses first, but don't say, oh, I'm going to take a year off and I don't know what I'm going to do. If you have a plan, that's okay to take a year off. I know some people, what they do is they travel. They do an um, exchange um, uh, internship. They might go to another country to teach English or teach Chinese or do something. But you're going to learn a lot from that and then bring it back and do whatever you want. It's like, you know what? I decided what I want to do. I want to be um, a social worker or I want to help people and I want to work with kids or I want to work with the elderly. So there's so many careers out there. And right now there might even be some careers that aren't even like out there yet. Because think about it with the pandemic, so many new job titles showed up, you know, because people made the best of it. It's like, you know what? I can't be in the theater anymore because all the theaters show up. So this is what I'm going to do. I always liked jewelry. So this person started making her own jewelry and she's a thriving business as a jewelry maker. So like I said, if, there's a will, there's a way, you know, if you're passionate about something and you really are not afraid to work hard, nothing comes easy. And if it does, be, gr be grateful because it doesn't come like that to everyone. Um, so I think I went over my time. <laughs> so does anybody else have any other questions? And if you do, shoot me an email. I'll be more than happy to um, 
you know, to have a further discussion. And like I said, with everything you do, the, um, you know, be patient, be flexible, be creative, have empathy and compassion for yourself and people and be very caring. And you know what? Don't feel guilty that you put yourself first. There's always a saying, you have to fill your own pitcher before you can pour it to anybody else. So if you're burned out because you're helping, like I had to work in the laundry since I was three, third grade, I had to iron shirts, wrap them, you name it. But it taught me a good work ethic. Then I taught me how hard my parents had to work. So when I opened my school, I made sure I knew how to clean the toilets, vacuum. I had to do everything. And everyone that's there knows how to do everybody's job. And never be disrespectful of anyone that doesn't have, like, quote, unquote, the same, in your eyes, the same level of job. Everyone's important, whatever it is they do. So, you know, that's, that's my advice. <laughs> Daniel! All right, thank you so much. You probably hear about uh, uh, Dodo is uh, uh, asking Daniel to be part in the second floor. So uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Wang. Thank you for participating in our uh, PCDC career workshop. And uh, uh, I, I feel like our kids will learn a lot about uh, early childhood education and the career. And also, and uh, thank a lot for uh, introducing some uh, college uh, experience to the kids as well. So uh, thank you so much, and I appreciate uh, your help. Our PCDC oh, you're welcome. It was my pleasure. And like I said, if there's other topics that everybody, you know, anybody want to like discuss, or maybe for future topics for for this, um, I, I again I thank all of you for being on here on a Friday beautiful afternoon. Uh, I hope I hope you learned something, and I hope that you know encourages to have that open communication. You know, so uh, have a good spring break. Stay safe. And thank you again for inviting me to speak. I hope I see or meet some of you one of these days because all I see are black screens with names. <laughs> uh, thank you again. I uh, wish you, you have a great weekend. Thank okay, you. Okay, take care. Thank you. Bye. You too. Uh, uh, so, Kevin. Uh, I think uh, we still have some students left here, and uh, maybe we can play some uh, virtual games with them if they want to participate with. Okay.